Good afternoon or good morning or wherever you are. Welcome to the SQF uh, webinar hosted by Mary Yu. This webinar today is about allergens and specifically uh, food allergens and protecting allergic consumers, preventing recalls. So there's a lot of action in this area as it relates to the release of the new FASTER Act and sesame being a new allergen within the United States. And I'm not gonna take away the thunder from our host, Mary Yu, or our uh, speaker, Tracy Sheehan. But uh, before I hand it off to Tracy, I do wanna do some quick introductions from the SQF and FMI staff. So first I wanna introduce our FMI food safety, real, our retail food safety team. Um, the uh, first is Hillary Tesmar and Hillary is our senior vice president of food safety programs. Um, next is Ashley Eisenbeiser, and she's the Senior Director of Food and Product Safety Programs. And then Adam Freelander, who's the Manager of Food Safety and Technical Service. And uh, you'll meet all of them within our breakout rooms later on today. Uh, then I want to take the time to introduce our SQF staff, uh, Gigi Vita, who's our Senior Vice President at SQF. Uh, Margaret Core. So Margaret, raise your wave, wave your hands. Uh, Margaret Core, Vice President of Marketing and Industry Relations. Uh, Christy Griswinski, our Technical Director. Tammy Van Buren, Compliance Manager. Jesse Cashman, our Technical Support Assistant. And I don't think I introduced myself. My name is Leanne Chubbuff, the Vice President of Technical Affairs, um, and I'll be your moderator today. So I won't, don't want to take any more of our time from our host, Mary Yu, and I'm just going to hand it right over to Tracy Sheehan. Tracy? Thank you, Leanne. And uh, I'd like to introduce our team uh, before we get started. Uh, so we've got uh, Martin Fowle, who is our Director of Auditing Operations and leads our SQF audits, as well as others. Um, John Kern, who leads our auditing, uh, conducts audits, but also does technical reviews of SQF audits and uh, is very knowledgeable about the allergen space. He'll be do Martin and John will be doing the preventive controls breakout room. Stephanie Wilkins leads our labeling and compliance and uh, research services group, as well as um, Jennifer Kopp, who also does our labeling and is an expert in global labeling. They will lead our labeling preventive control session. And then Steve Oswald is our global training uh, hub leader. And we do training both public uh, courses, online courses. And then uh, Walt Brand leads our chemistry testing for allergens. So Steve and Walt will lead uh, allergen testing and training session. And uh, let me share the presentation. And is that visible? Yes. Great. So as Leanne mentioned, we want to talk about food allergens, really protecting allergic consumers, your consumers, and preventing recalls. So if we look at the agenda, we want to cover the global allergen uh, issues uh, currently available and, and prevalence of allergens. We'll cover the U.S. FASTER Act related to sesame seeds, really talk about different preventive controls for allergens. And then we're going to choose some breakout sessions. The breakout sessions are preventive controls at the site, labeling preventive controls and allergen testing and training. And uh, participants will be able to choose which breakout room they want to attend. Uh, we'll come back with Mary Yu leading the breakout uh, group recap. And then SQF will lead a trivia game. And so stay tuned, there's prizes involved and a lot of fun. So um, let me just get started. When we look at allergens in the United States, uh, for many years, we've been uh, dealing with what we call the big eight. Uh, so those are the major allergens that are prevalent in the uh, US population and they're ranked. So I, I listed the references below. And really, if you look at it, peanut allergen is the number one allergen in the US with 2.2% of the population being allergic to peanuts. It was followed by milk at 1.9 and then the the other allergens. If you look at countries around the world, they regulate other allergens in addition to the big eight that we regulate in the US. 
Um, many countries regulate sesame, mustard, triticale, and cereals with gluten like they do in Canada. So if you're exporting to Canada, you want to look at that. And then sesame, I put up there specifically, there's a recent study in the U.S. population that the prevalence of sesame seed allergen is 0.2%. Uh, and this is why in, in the U.S. we um, now will be looking at the big nine and uh, we'll talk about the, the allergen uh, U.S. FASTER Act that'll regulate that. So what are the preventive controls that we can leverage for allergens in a facility? Um, in, in, if I'm taking a U.S. perspective, um, they modified the preventive control plans for allergens with the Food Safety Modernization Act or FSMA. Um, you can find those in 21 CFR Part 117. Um, historically, they would have been for your top eight allergens. And as of next year, it'll include sesame. So when you add sesame, what do you need to look at? You may need to modify your HACCP plan or your HARP-C plan um, as its preventive controls. You may wanna modify your ingredient storage and mapping the allergen movement throughout the facility to assure that you contain uh, that allergen. You may wanna look at modifying allergen weighing to assure utensils do not have cross contact. Um, color coding of utensils, check of the use of rework for allergen cross contact, packaging changeover, preventive controls. And then, you know, just like SQF is an, uh, includes requirements on allergen control with their audit, you also wanna look at modifying your own internal audit so that you have all the allergens listed um, as they occur. I mean, many times you're adding new products, you, that should be a constant process to make sure that every new product that has a new allergen is included in your overall internal audit, your GFSI audits, any customer audits you may have or supplier audits. Um, if you're making gluten-free or allergen-free claims, uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, we have a whole protocol on, on best practice on that. So what are some labeling preventive controls? Um, when you're developing and updating label changes, uh, many customers uh, use a supplier questionnaire for every ingredient so they can capture what uh, ingredients are in there um, to be needed to be labeled for their foods. Um, but historically, maybe they didn't include sesame, or maybe they're now exporting to Europe and there's a list of 17 allergens they need to label. Um, so you want to think about all the allergens that may be in those ingredients um, and make sure they're on your finished label. Um, consider supplier contracts requiring three months of notification of label change. And the reason I put this in there is it's, I used to be in the manufacturing side, and sometimes the supplier would let, let us know, you know, days before they were going to make a change to their label, and that had implications to our finished product label. So you think about how long it takes to create a label and whatever time you need uh, to assure that if a supplier changes that ingredient that you can make it on the finished product in time. Uh, you want to develop and update the ingredient statements based on the supplier data. Um, you, you want to consider whether you need supplemental allergen statements like contains peanut and sesame. And the labeling group, when we have a breakout session, they can cover that. Um, you can't use that as an excuse for poor GMPs, but there may be reasons why you need to add that. Uh, allergen and gluten-free claims and validation of those uh, sanitation practices uh, to be able to know what labeling you need to put there. Um, and then consider a review of labels. In addition to development, uh, many third-party experts like Mary Yu can develop the labels. They can do reviews of labels. They, they have proficiency testing or, or could send you examples of best practice. Um, on, on labeling. We can review all labels at receiving. Uh, we recommend that you review all labels at receiving prior to storage. Sometimes the label manufacturer will get the allergens wrong on the label, so we recommend that it's every lot you're checking. You want to review the all the labels at packaging changeover, and because that's really the most common reason for recalls, and uh, recommend that you're documenting that uh, changeover with a, a checklist. And then for packaging, whether, where you have, may have an inner label and an outer label, like if it's a box that gets opened for uh, selling individuals, you want to make sure those allergens are correct on both labels, and sometimes that gets uh, missed. 
On allergen testing, um, and I've got it as preventive controls, but it's really an overall allergen testing um, program. You want to look at if you're running allergens on the same line, what do you need to do to conduct an allergen cleaning validation study? Some companies uh, use us for a uh, validation study report. So they have a third party look at the testing and the verification that their sanitation practice, practices are acceptable. And then if you're doing your own testing, um, you want to make sure that you're uh, either ISO 17025 compliant or similar programs according to the new SQF and GFSI benchmark standards so that you have things like um, proficiency testing, things like knowing the matrix that you're testing because the allergen test kits, the ELISA kits are very sensitive to the matrix. And you wanna understand the kit limitations. Some kits measure the whole allergen, some measure parts of the allergen and you wanna understand that difference. And then if you don't have proficiency testing options and not all allergens do, what other tests would you put in place either at your internal lab or an external lab? Things like round robin testing, blind internal spikes. You just wanna make sure that the, mess, the result you're getting is accurate. And um, last, I'll just cover that um, I think it's very critical that all employees in the facilities or on farm understand allergen uh, requirements. They understand the regulation, um, understand the segregation program that you've put in place and understand the implications if they're not getting the allergens in the right spot in terms of storage or mixing or, or labeling. And so we offer either public courses, um, online virtual courses that are instructor led. And then we also um, can do customized courses at, at facilities that can help train on and, or even help you develop an allergen control plan if you're sort of starting from scratch and you know, a lot of people are. Um, and then maintaining documentation records is critical for the training as well as um, all of your programs if a regulatory inspector comes in or a customer that wants to see those. Um, so we just mentioned that. Okay, that's a brief overview. And then we're gonna do breakout rooms. Um, if you have a preference, uh, Mark, Margaret or others, we're going to do a poll for that so people can choose. So we'll After call... the breakout rooms, we'll come back as a whole and talk about all that, each of the breakout rooms, rooms and some key insights that we learned. So you can hop between breakout rooms or stay in that one, but we'll certainly come back and, and regroup as well. Um, but Tracy, there was a question that came up in the chat. I think it's been clarified, but it was about uh, Canada yeah. and sulfites. Yeah. yeah, sulfites are regulated in both the U.S. and right, come in. Oh, I, I was just going to sulfite labeling is regulated in both the U.S. and Canada and many other countries. I did not include that as an allergen because it's really considered a hypersensitivity, um, but it is regulated. So um, there is a question um, in the chat that Tracy, I now have missed it. Um, yeah, I think I see it. Um, okay. I think it's someone asked is proficiency testing for protein allergen swabs necessary um protein allergen swabs measure protein they don't measure the allergen itself there are other swab kits that measure the exact allergen and that's really what's recommended because sometimes the protein kits don't have the same sensitivity as the allergen or they have different sensitivities. So um, you, you, the best practice is to use the allergen kits. Um, the protein swabs uh, are a good indication and they're, they're easy to use in terms of sanitation, um, but that's really not detecting the hazard. I mean, it's similar to using uh, aerobic plate count versus actually measuring for salmonella. We'll go through the breakout sessions in order. So Martin or John, would you like to kind of recap 
what we covered um, on the preventive controls for on-site allergens. Sure, I'll kind of summarize. Or go ahead, John. All yours. All right. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit, uh, a little bit about uh, um, allergens and storage and some of the best practices there as far as segregation, uh, labeling, and identification. Um, we talked about uh, packaging and, and especially changeovers and some of the best practices uh, to put in place there. Um, what else did we cover? Um, um, batching and best practices as far as uh, you know, using color-coded uh, utensils and organizing the, the batching area, identifying allergens that are batched. Um, and we also touched on rework and a few other subjects. I thought, uh, I thought it went really well. Thank you, John. And then for session number two, it would be Stephanie and Jennifer to recap. Maybe. Yeah, um, this a uh, great conversation. A lot of um, great uh, links and references were shared in the chat to the individuals um, in the session to kind of um, use as kind of quick tips or kind of quick references that um, individuals used when it comes to allergens. We talked about the sesame, kind of the impact on that. Um, it was great to hear that a majority, almost the whole, everyone in that group is ready for sesame. So that was um, great to hear. Um, then we just kind of talked about um, tree nuts and kind of questions with uh, shea butter. So that was a really hot topic in our group um, today. Um, and then just going over, you know, precautionary statements and kind of understanding when um, it should be declared and when it should not. So um, I would say it was, it was a great group. They had some great questions for Jennifer and I and uh, the rest of the team. So um, thank you for, for the participation. Great. Thanks, Stephanie. And then uh, session number three, the allergen testing and training, uh, Steve and Walt. Yeah, I'll take that one, Walt. Um, there was a lot of questions. And by the way, Jordan, you got cut off. If you do have questions, uh, send it, please send them in. I know there was a couple other hands raised, so we had good discussion. Uh, went through a lot of it was regarding sanitation validation and some of the basically protein swabs versus the specific allergen swabs. How do you validate the actual testing regarding that? We talked about uh, risk assessments in regards to ingredients, understanding what uh, your incoming ingredients are, your processing environment, and your uh, any potential for cross uh, reaction uh, with the method itself due to the environment and also uh, cross contamination due to GMPs. There was also a question regarding ATP versus allergen testing when it comes to um, the actual trend of confirmation and where we prefer the safe, safe bet is do sanitation validation, uh, err on the side of caution, don't increase your liability. And uh, like I said, there was a lot of questions that, that went through, but uh, if we didn't get through all of them, please go ahead and email and we'll try to get to them. Thank you, Steve. And I think we turn it over to Leanne for games. Sure. First, though, before we go on to uh, trivia and games, I do want to thank uh, our Mary U team for participating and sharing their expertise today. It was a fantastic session. So all the way from the beginning, learning about the FASTER Act and what we need to do for Sesame, I'm sure. Um, but all of our sites that are on are ready and prepared for them. So um, any of your allergen questions that you have, feel free to direct them to any of the Mary U team. Um, they all share expertise and definitely talk amongst each other. And if they don't know the answer, they will certainly find out for you. I know that for a fact, because I've done the same thing. So don't be shy, reach out to that Mario team. They're uh, very nice people. So thank you very much to the Mario team. I also want to give a big thank you to um, the SQF and the FMI team. So our FMI uh, experts, uh, in retail food safety and sharing their expertise um, from Hillary, Ashley, and Adam, and then the SQF team with Gigi, Margaret, uh, Tammy, and Jesse. So thank you to everybody.